The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets kicking things off in negative territory right now. You look at an S&P's, a little bit of volatility, even this morning in both directions. Right now, we're trading down 15 points at 44.46. NASDAQ 100 down 46 points, trading 15,075. Got the Dow off 124 points. All the markets, when you look at S&P's, NASDAQ, NASDAQ making all time high, I think no, not quite on Friday. Look how close we were right up to that level. But you had the Dow and the S&P making all time highs. Dow just off that level off 125 points. The Russell been the laggard here. Russell down half a percent at 2208. Crypto is continuing to trade higher. We got a 48,000 print for Bitcoin last night. Right now we're technically negative $305 on the session. 47,395. Crude backing off. Look at that acceleration from $68 to $66 almost this morning. Right now we're down $2.14 in crude, trading at $66.31. Got the gold contract catching a little bit of a bid. You back things up for gold, we'll put it 10 days. There's your acceleration last Sunday night. Gold actually finished. Check out the weekly, folks, on gold. We got a green bar. Remarkable action when you look at it. Let's take off that Fibonacci. There's your acceleration Sunday night to 1677.90. You actually finished the week in the positive at a price point of 17 uh 1781. Yes, and we're pretty much right at, is that 1781? Where's the close? 1781.50. Looks like we're trading pretty much right at that level right now in gold. Back to a short-term chart. We jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price and lower yield. Look at that acceleration there. We're talking about a yield right now pulling up 1.26%. Now we put this thing back to see last week's action. Quite a little reversal there. Finally getting a little bit of a pop. You traded from 135.14 two weeks ago Wednesday down to 133.09 more than two full points that was the low on Wednesday we get some CPI data not quite as hot as maybe you thought the market a little bit of lower yield than we're thinking 1.26 percent a little bit of a reversal from that action we had over the last two weeks in the 10 year and we jumped to the volatility index this morning a little bit of negative action we got a jump in the VIX to 1720 so far this morning all right, in terms of the news out there, what's happening? Some pretty sensational images, unfortunate, what's happened over there in Afghanistan. Uh, in terms of the airport, Kabul just taken over almost instantly after departure. Unfortunately, that's gotten political 20 years. Remarkable that that war is going on. Um, bunch of bad options over there um, in terms of that is that is the scenario in my opinion um, but remarkable images in terms of the airport getting taken over I saw some images this morning of planes getting out of there with actually people literally hanging off them just craziness um, hopefully that sorts out for the best a tough deal over there but those images really sh shocking in, in uh, every way as I was watching all right let's jump right into the stocks that are moving this morning now we get a lot of retail earnings this morning already uh, excuse me this week we get retail earnings this week we'll go over those we get target walmart walmart i'll get there some others uh this morning sonos check this out surging more than 10 percent the maker of speakers there's a pop for you it trades from 38 to 43 43 overnight the back to 42 23 you're still up more than four dollars more than a 10 percent pop that having to do with uh, an International Trade Commission judge ruling that Alphabet's Google unit had infringed on some of the high-end speaker companies' audio technology patents, which could eventually lead to an import ban for some Pixel smartphones and Nest audio speakers. Yikes. Uh, we'll jump over to Google. Google unfazed. Google barely negative. We're going to open at about 2750. You're trading 2754. Google, man, one of the strongest companies out there, man. Um, the, the YouTube, I mean, let alone controlling Google, which is by far and rightfully so the search uh, domain for the Internet. I mean, nobody can catch up with them, whether it's Microsoft or whatnot. But then you cycle over to YouTube, which is a huge portion of their business. And YouTube is its own content creator. I mean, that company alone 
uh, when there was all the concerns over antitrust, et cetera. We're talking about 100% from where we were in September. You back things up for the weekly. You were down at 1,000 on the COVID lows. But if you recall, I believe it was about September of last year. So you're going back about 11 months now. Antitrust concerns really started to rise up. You went from 1726. You pulled back to 1402. And from there, you take off and you've pulled back, uh, accelerate 100% of that equity. We all know online sales, right? Advertising, whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, just accelerating dramatically more eyeballs online on your phone. Uh, receiving content in that form, folks. I go down the YouTube rabbit hole many times. Uh, outside of business hours, just in a recreational aspect, right? Whether it's health and fitness, um, whether it's cooking, uh, whether it's just any type of a podcast type that interests me, maybe people doing interviews, just so many great programs on YouTube. Um, that's just gonna be a strong one for a while. Now, man, you go from 1400 to 2800, you better believe that there could be a pullback. I mean, this was a one-way shot. I got a three-year weekly up here, folks. We talk about it all the time. You want to blow your mind. I mean, just look what a 382 would do to this equity, which would just be a normal retracement. You're talking about a $500 pullback potentially on Google. Now, that's putting it on a weekly, okay? But you put it on a daily. Let's take it off again to see the run. This is basically a one-way shot. There is almost no pullback on this chart going from 1400 last September. So be careful on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, on Google. Couldn't be stronger than on, on that equity. But when you have barely a $100 pullback, when you trade from $1,400 to $2,800, and you're not talking about a company that's maybe worth, you know, a few billion dollars doubling in value, you're you're talking about a company that was worth almost $1 trillion. They were worth $900 billion when they started that run, and now they're worth $1.8 trillion. Remarkable those companies. All right, let's jump around to other equities that are moving this morning. Uh, T-Mobile. So this one. Uh, wireless carrier said it's investigating claims, and I'm going to pull up. I was reading an article about this earlier, and while I'm reading this, I'm going to try and find this article because I think it's being peddled for only $270,000 on the probably the dark web. Uh, it's investigating claims in an online forum of a data breach that involves the personal data of over 100 million users. You, re you read that correctly. You heard it correctly. The post itself doesn't mention T-Mobile, but Vice Media quotes the purported hacker saying the data came from T-Mobile services. Uh, and when you pull it up, and I'm trying to find it if I get it in time, I believe the number was 270,000 that they are trying to peddle for that. Come on. Where's my article? I got my history up here. Here we go. Uh, and the article goes, investigating claims of data breach. And there it is. The anonymous seller reportedly seeking six Bitcoin, six Bitcoin for uh, data belonging to 30 million they talk about here. Could be as high as 100 million, though. Uh, the data breach, if con confirmed, could affect nearly every T-Mobile customer in the U.S. Uh, the telecom company reported about 105 million users. TMUS is their symbol. Now, this thing has been a rocket ship in a big way. This morning, you're going to be down about 2% on that number. There you go. From 145, you touch 140, you're trading at 141.50. I expect maybe we'll look for some news from them in the future. Uh, maybe they deny it. Not sure. It's speculative right now. You put this thing on a three-year weekly. My goodness, right? Talk about a run, folks. 60 bucks to start off 2019. You're at about 80 bucks to start off 2020. You dive down to a COVID low of 63.50. You pull back early this year to 115. You're gonna open today about 140. Pretty remarkable, uh, the discussion in terms of 100 million, potentially $270,000. Maybe a social security number isn't quite what it used to be worth on the dark web. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee 
TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in negative territory. We got about 11 minutes to go until the start of trading for the week. We got the S&Ps negative by about 14 points, all things considered, bumping up near all-time highs. Those highs made Friday. And look at the acceleration we got, even in the volume there, coming into the close, right? Final five minutes, the market plows higher to 44.63. In the S&Ps, you jump over to the Dow. We look where we are. A little bit of a different action in the Dow, right? There's your closing action on the Dow. Didn't quite even make it back up. Let me zoom back out. Didn't quite make it. We'll zoom in on Friday's action. Back to the open that we had on the Dow. NASDAQ 100, though, jump over there. There's your Friday action. Just missed the high that we had early in the day. We're just off those levels, and the Russell has been the, Russell has been the laggard, as we talked about. Okay, jumping around to some of the companies that are moving this morning. We're going to jump to Chipotle. So Chipotle gets a lowering of their rating from Raymond James. Important to go about the context, though. Outperformed from strong buy, entirely based on the fact of valuation after the stock's risen 37% recently. You pulled up CMG, Chipotle Mexican Grill. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are going to, eh, it looks like it might be a little bit lower this morning. We have a bid ask of 1856 by 1880. Remarkable price action on this equity. We'll put it on a three year weekly. And as you see, I mean, this thing was just trading at 1320 in June. It's just August, folks, and we're trading at almost 1900, let alone you were at almost 400 on the lows last year. You came into 2020 just above 800 on Chipotle. They are doing a lot of things right, though. I uh, Anecdotally, I ordered some Moe's, which is definitely a competitor to Chipotle this weekend. Uh, not a great experience. It was Moe's. We decided to pick up. Took forever. Uh, just wasn't a great experience. And I said to myself, you know, it was Saturday night, I think. I think it was Saturday night. So I said, it's going to be busy, right? And they just had too much action. They weren't servicing it well. You couldn't get the food. As compared to Chipotle's, they're building those Chipotle lanes. And I have no Chipotle, folks. I have no shares of it. I should have some. 1,800. Um but you just see the differential and the separation with some of those companies and how it matters. When you have choices like that and you go through a bad experience, especially when the company is just not set up to handle demand spurs that they have, like a Saturday night dinner demand. You got a bunch of people ordering pickup. You can't service those people. There are cars there waiting. They don't have enough spots for curbside pickup, right? They don't even have enough spots. You compare that to Chipotle, which is building a lot of their restaurants with lanes specifically just for pickup for online orders. You can't even order in the lane. You have to order online and pick it up. 
I, anyway, it's just uh, you see the separation. Um, the other side of that, that is Chipotle. And I don't know how this factors, folks. So I order food on Uber Eats most of the time when I do. I do have DoorDash as well. Chipotle gets away with charging like $9 for delivery somehow around me. Now, I'm in uh, towards the center of Florida, more so than the coast. Maybe it's just a sparse uh, scarcity thing of drivers, but the other restaurants ain't doing that. Somehow, they've created a premium for Chipotle, $9 to deliver it, which is part of the reason why I went to Moe's and just decided to pick up. said, that's a little bit annoying, but you know what? Wasn't the best experience. Uh, something to keep in mind, because they get a lowering of their rating, but only because the stock has just gone so high so quickly. Chipotle, you know, investing in the future right now for online ordering, folks, are tendencies have shifted dramatically now it's part of the reason why i do own uber uh now uber's been struggling we're going to get a positive open today to about 41 uh no it's down another 40 cents with the market okay i thought that said 42.82 you take a look at this thing now we are back let's put it through a three-year weekly to see the full run we've had you break to a low of 1371 on covid you drive up to 6405, things really accelerate in November, the news of the vaccines. You've pulled back almost entirely, folks, to a world where we didn't even know that vaccines were going to be effective in this. Now, yes, there are breakthrough cases of the vaccine that you can transmit the virus. But, folks, the people ending up in the hospitals, majority of them are people who are unvaccinated. I tie that together because does Uber deserve to be back at a price and we're not back there yet and hopefully it doesn't but we're approaching levels folks where i may even add to this position because you're telling me that you're going to come back to a level that is going to be before the world had any efficacy data for the vaccines which is a price tag of approaching 36 dollars in october of last year we had uber chopping around basically between about 32 and 37 we're trading at 42 we're going to open on under 42 this morning for uber shares and yes, they're struggling. Travel is struggling in a big way. Business use of that struggling in a big way. But during that time, they've accelerated their food delivery business dramatically. Their ride sharing business has suffered. Eventually, we will get over these, you know, the resurgent, whether it's the third wave, whether it's the fourth wave, depending where we are in the world, because Uber does service the whole world, which is what, part of the reason that's weighing on them right now. Um, even though cases in the U.S. are some of the harshest out there, especially in Florida. Uh, but something to keep your eye on, you know, you start approaching those levels that we're talking about prior to the vaccine data. Um, that is a level I'm very comfortable with on Uber. Unfortunately, we've pulled back. I mean, you're talking about almost a 33% pullback on this equity. We're under the 382. So that's some dicey territory. Um, we'll see where we go. And uh, they are going to struggle worldwide on their ride delivery, ride sharing business in a big way. But the world is changing and food delivery is the way to go in the future. And that is not going away anytime soon. And you're seeing it with Chipotle and their price shares, which was why we jumped over. And let's jump over to DoorDash, too, while we're talking about it. Look at DoorDash, just from 110 back there in May. And uh, they weren't even public, were they? Yeah, they were not even public back in last November. Just went public in December 2020. Quite a little pop, though, from 110 to 195 recently. Still, you got that acceleration high back in January of 256 for DoorDash. Okay, let's jump down the line of other equities that are moving this morning. Uh, Coinbase. So we got the cryptos charging higher. You got Coinbase higher with the cryptos as well. Bitcoin. Uh, now, Coinbase barely higher. You're talking about $2 higher to 263 We take a look at Bitcoin. BTC. Bitcoin, 47000 Quite the pop we've got. Let's take this Fibonacci number off here now. We remove that. 47150 You look from where we were on the high, you're right at a 50% retracement there on that equity. Um, equity on Bitcoin, that would be forty-seven thousand one fifty, or within a hundred dollars of that price point of the fifty percent retracement. Forty-seven thousand. We were just under thirty thousand though the week of July nineteenth. So you're talking about in thirty days, you trade from under thirty thousand to forty-seven thousand fifty. Now I think is Ethereum. There we go. There's Ethereum. Quite the pop as well. Thirty-two eighty-two for Ethereum. The high was forty-four oh six before it fell out of bed. But you were just trading at seventeen fifteen. Back there in the same week from 1715, I mean, that's almost a 100 percent pop. You're up fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars from that low of seventeen hundred on Ethereum. All the crypto is really accelerating higher. But man, you look at it, right? I got weekly bars up here. One, two, three, four. The fifth week, this would be that we're pushing a green bars back to Bitcoin. BTC. And you're talking about the same thing. Let me take that off for some clarity. And you're talking about one, two, three, four, the fifth straight week that we've been rising. Uh, you know Bitcoin can do it. But, man, even if this is a pop, anytime you go from 30000 to 47, anytime you go from 1700 to 30, 
3,500, 3,200. What are we trading at? 3,200 in Ethereum. Um, the pullbacks can be harsh. I mean, set this up on a daily to see the pop we've had. And just looking at a natural retracement in Bitcoin, and you're talking about down to 40,885. Uh, and maybe that's where it does pull back. That's an area where you pulled back initially at the end of July before you accelerated higher again. Nonetheless, volatility persists in Bitcoin the big way. All right, let's jump around to see what we got going on as we come into the open here. We got the S&P on a daily basis. We are just creeping higher on that up channel that I keep bringing up. Well-defined channel to the upside. We're pushing 44.50 in the S&Ps right now. Remarkable when you think. We got three and a half months left to go in the year right now. Uh, we're sitting at 44.50. That's a lot of trading left in the year as we come in. Uh, could there be some tax selling at the end of this year? Definitely possible. Tax rates, possible they're going to go up, folks. Uh, Something to consider as this market just plows higher, even in the face of uh, many jobs to make up in that economy. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back from the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. we got the S&Ps right now, negative by about 12 points. That's about a quarter percent of 44.50. Tech stocks slightly in the red by about a quarter percent as well, trading at 15,086 for the NASDAQ 100. we got the Dow catching a little bit of a bit on the open, still down about a quarter percent as well. Russell, though, leading the way, a little bit of a 
uh, divergences. And Russell, the laggard as usual, off a half a percent at 22.07. We jump around to what else is going on. Tesla slightly in the red with the market today, but a little bit more. You're down 1.6 percent. So Tesla, they're going to be dealing with an investigation, a formal probe. You have the National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Administration announcing in the action Monday and posting on its website. So they're investigating, I believe it's the auto, uh, what do they got here? Yes, the auto pilot partially automated driving system. That's not a mouthful. Uh, saying it had trouble spotting parked emergency vehicles. That seems to be a big one, to, to put it lightly, right? 11 crashes just since 2018 in which Teslas on autopilot or traffic-aware cruise control have hit vehicles with flashing lights, flares, an illuminated arrow board, or cones warning a hazard. It covers Model Y, X, S, and 3 from 2014 to 2021 years. Um, the agency has sent investigative teams to 31 crashes involving partially automated driver assist systems since June of 2016. Um, they can keep a vehicle centered in its lane and a safe distance from vehicles in front of it. Of those, 25 involved autopilot in which 10 deaths were reported. Um, my interpretation of this, though, is that this is not going to be a dramatic impact on Tesla. The technology marches on and not that it's the cost of doing business because lives never should be. But you're looking at a company that is defining technology, whether it's battery technology, self-driving technology, AI, and as it gets adapted to greater wide use, there is that potential, and hopefully those regulars get their hands on it because it doesn't seem like Tesla would be the company to self-regulate on this one, and this may be the first step of it. I don't think it really matters in the valuation, though, as these are obstacles that will be priced into this equity as it plows forward. You're still down 2.1%. Let me see, no real reaction when you think about uh, the severity of that type of an investigation and what it could imply in terms of selling a product with a system that says it's self-driving, that plows you into emergency vehicles. I mean, understand that fundamentally for a second. Could you imagine if you or I started a business selling devices that could help your car drive itself and all of a sudden they couldn't spot emergency vehicles and somehow that's just taken as fact that that is what tesla is doing but that is where we are and that is how the market's interpreting it and that is what matters most when you look at um one of those equities still down 2.1 percent but man we're back to just where we were trading on thursday tech stocks catching a little bit of a bid down only one tenth percent right now trading at 15,099. what else we got going on uh, let's see what I got up here. So let's jump into some of the um, some of the earnings we got going on. Why not? So we'll start it off on Tuesday. So in terms of what we get Tuesday, the headline number there is going to be Walmart. Now we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. If you want to check it out, folks, on the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com, all the newsletters we have at TFNN come with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers. Walmart has been on quite a tear recently. Now we've had it for a bit in my newsletter. We had to ride some negative action recently, but this thing's just popped from 135 to 150. You're up 15 bucks just since we were trading basically in the last month. That's an 11 or 12 percent pop in a company like Walmart that's got a dividend out there to boot as well. You're trading at 150. You take a look at the analyzed tab. They got an expected move about $4.70 on their numbers. Now we'll look at the trades in terms of for the week, it's implied volatility of about $5.70. So it's pretty cool, right? That you know, if you're in the option market, the option market through the type of volatility that they're pricing in to the options are expecting about a $4.70 move that is going to be triggered tonight and then tomorrow, for the remainder of the week, once we have those numbers, once we have that variable taken out of the equation, there's still going to be about a dollar, give or take, in the week. And that is correlating to, if you want to go out one week further, you can pay about a buck twenty extra in terms of what you're paying for implied volatility numbers um, going out to maybe, whether it's August 27th. You want to go out to two weeks sometimes, folks. What's your, what's your bias, right? Do you want to give yourself... Just this week on the earnings, do you want to give yourself a couple weeks? Do you want to go out months, et cetera? And you see those types of implied moves. So Walmart, they're out with their numbers, pulling up the earnings. Yes, it is tomorrow. They'll be out with their numbers, $4.70. Interesting to see what they have to talk about in terms of Walmart. They have a lot going on, of course. they got Walmart Plus. Uh, they have Sam's Club. My history is they 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 got to step up the process, folks. We do have them. They're a tremendous company in terms of we have them in my newsletter. I own them myself, of course. Um but they have to improve their process. Just as a shopper, we uh, we did a, a order at we ordered um, a bunch of items at Walmart over the weekend, 
and it was going to be a delivery and we thought it was going to be free and all of a sudden there's an eight dollar delivery charge it was over 35 bucks i don't think we have walmart plus in my household it's tough to keep track of all the subscriptions at some point um that you do have nonetheless it was not a great experience i've i've been through sam's which we have which is you know, they're wholesaler. Again, some of the items not showing up as good as they should have been. Um, they need to improve some of their processes. And part of what had hurt Walmart, when you back it up to maybe a year ago in November, part of their earnings, and I think it may, maybe it was even the February one, was talking about they really needed to spend some money to improve their processes. When you've got to compete with Amazon, you better be spending money because Amazon, they get it done, folks. And I own Amazon, too. They get it done in a big way, and that's your competitor. You know, you got beautiful new boxes showing up, and yes, I agree. Boxes, if they could use recycle boxes, that would be great as well. But user experience, new crisp boxes. I've had boxes show up from Sam's that look like they've been used for 17 years, and they got tape all over them. It's okay, I guess, but things literally almost falling out of the box. Sometimes it's just the process needs to improve. So they, they, there is volatility. I'm a bull on that. But there is volatility going into that earnings because they're competing with Amazon. They have to spend a lot of money. That money to compete with Amazon might hurt the bottom uh, bottom line. But we'll see as they trade higher yet again. And on negative market day, you had Walmart giving back some of those gains quickly. But you get a pop on the open, still up about two-tenths percent right now as they have their numbers tomorrow. Also, what we get tomorrow is Home Depot. A little bit of vice versa. They're trading lower with the market. Now, you take a look at Home Depot on a daily basis, right? You're at 246 back in March. You charge to 345. You pull back almost a 50%. I've had this on my radar as well. Home Depot and Lowe's, tremendous companies as well. Quite the resurgence lately as you trade from under 300 as recently as just about two months ago, June 18th. You push up to almost 340. Now, Home Depot. You're talking about an $8.42 move. You have a $328 stock. We take a look at the weekly basis. You want to go for the full week, as you can see, playing with some example trades there, uh, $11.16. So not that bad. You know, you're talking about under a 3% move on this equity priced in. 3% would be almost $10 on this equity. So you got about a 2.5% move priced into the equity for options. It's really what you want to consider, folks, because if you're, this, you're the one selling volatility, right? you're only getting paid for an expected move of $8.42. If you think this has more volatility than that, then maybe you're the one who's going to be paying the implied volatility number. Uh, nonetheless, Home Depot with their numbers. Uh, we also get Krispy Kreme tomorrow, breaking down the analysis. Now, we get Fed Minutes out this week as well. Jumping on Wednesday, we also, not only do we get retailers, um, but we get some of the chip stocks. We get Cisco out with their numbers on Wednesday, I believe, checking it out. Let's see, earnings. There it is. Yes, Cisco's out with their numbers on Wednesday. You're talking about almost a $2 move for a $56 equity. We get maybe the one that will be most watched this week, potentially, NVIDIA out with their numbers. Talking about a $9 move for a $200 stock. They're out Wednesday as well. We get Target. We get Lowe's on Wednesday. We'll take a look at those as well when we come back from retailers. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets pulling back a bit. We got the S&Ps right now down about 19 points. You see that acceleration on a 15-minute bar. Well, let's put it on a one minute to see the real action since the open. You hang tough for about two minutes. Since then, we've sold off. Coming down, we're about down, excuse me, down about 20 points. Dow's down about 211. Look at that on a minute basis. Accelerating to under 35,200. Just since the open, we're down about 120 points on the Dow right now. Back to a five-minute basis. In terms of other equities we have, with earnings going on this week, Wednesday, as we talked about, we got Lowe's and Target on Wednesday. Now, we just pulled up Home Depot, right? There's your, let's put a daily on Home Depot to compare. So you have that real acceleration, March to May, we pull back into late June, and then we pop higher. Lowe's, you pull up L-O-W, a little bit of a different story, right? You see, not quite the same second pop that you got in Home Depot. The Lowe's that we had back in June, you were at 184. You're pushing 189 right now on Lowe's. You did have the run from 150 to 215. You put this thing on a three year weekly though watch out we were down at sixty dollars which is probably why you haven't seen that second acceleration as it factors in because you take a look at home depot not quite the same multiples um not quite the same multiples but pretty drastic as i do pull it up talking about 140 at the lows we were down at 250 earlier this year back to a 15 whoops back to a 15 minute for lows to see the type of action we're expecting now they're out with their numbers on wednesday uh to see where we're talking about i believe they are before the bell too to be exact let's pull it up on wednesday and yes, uh, progressive. Yes, it is. So Lowe's is going to be pre-market on Wednesday with their numbers. That's going to be the same with Target. They'll be pre-market on Wednesday. We got TJ Maxx pre-market on Wednesday. We got a big week of earnings this week. Uh, it's a nice week. Larry Pesimento, we're going to talk about. He's got a live trading webinar, five hours, coming up on Thursday. But So we get a lot of earnings. There's Lowe's. Jump on over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about an $8.65 move. That's more than a 4% move priced into this equity on their numbers coming out. We take a look at Target as well. Target, you're talking about almost a 5% move, 4 to 5% move, $258 equity. We got an $11 move in Target. You take a look at Target, down about 1.1% to today to start off the day. This thing, though, my goodness. I mean, you could make the case that it actually accelerated above its channel line recently, as of recently as June, July 1st. Excuse me. You back it up to a three-year weekly. This thing has just been quite a rocket ship. You were down at about 100 bucks at the lows of COVID. You're pushing 258 all-time highs potentially last week. Not potentially. Uh, 267.06 for Target. So they have, as I said, about $11 move priced into their equities coming out Wednesday before the bell as well. Let's take a look at TJ Maxx because they'll be out Wednesday before the bell as well. TJ Maxx, $2.60, 6 cent move. Taking a look at the earnings. Yes, it is. Wednesday, they'll be out as well. All right. In terms of what we have happening, jump into Thursday real quick before we jump over to our man, Larry Pesimento. Uh, Thursday, the numbers we're talking about, jumping down the line. 
So we had Home Depot Tuesday, Lowe's on Wednesday, Cisco, excuse my reach, here we go. Thursday, Macy's, that's the one I want to get to to finish up. So Macy's. Now this thing, so much for that channel line. Let's delete that one because we ain't in that channel line anymore. Whoops, we want to remove that drawing. We want to remove this one as well. Remove the top line. Let's put it back to a daily. So this equity was just up to 20. You cook all that at the upper boundary, right? Going all the way back to basically the beginning of this year. Now, Macy's, that could have been a little bit of Reddit craziness, I believe, when you ran from 12 to 22 in the span of four days. You gave back almost all of that in the span of four days as well, back to $14. You did run up again. I think that's a Wall Street bets run as well. Be careful of those on the charts. Not exactly um, rational chart behavior but you got to keep it on your radar folks because man they could always happen again uh, but macy's 1868 we're down about 1.2 percent we'll be coming into their numbers on thursday you're talking about a dollar 53 the expected move there from macy's interesting when you look at it that's quite a move but rightfully so as a volatility on that equity has been big and the other equities i want to go over that are out and these are going to be illiquid equities okay folks victoria's secret and uh Bath & Body Works. They were the same company. They spun off Victoria's Secret. Now, I own these equities I've had for a while, going all the way back to pre-COVID. And I owned them for Victoria's Secret, more so than Bath & Body Works. Bath & Body Works was the juggernaut of earnings for this company. Victoria's Secret was the laggard. They were trying to spin it off to get rid of it because it was hurting the value of Bath & Body Works. Excuse me. During the last year, though, they've cut costs. They've closed stores. They did spin it off. But check out the divergence. Now, this spin off occurred in August and you had this thing start trading at 47 and right away the market says guess what we're valuing the Victoria's Secret component of this company dramatically higher than maybe was foreseen when you made the calculation of the valuation of the two equities within that company you trade from 47 up to 76 we've held near there now you look at the one day expected move for these now illiquid i am not trading these folks i do not plan on trading them i imagine the options in a company like victoria's secret okay to do the full wrap up we're talking about a company right now that's only valued at 6.2 billion dollars we take a look at the chart okay on a daily basis we're talking about only 1.8 million shares traded okay very illiquid when you get into an option of an equity that's only trading a million shares of the equity you get into the options, okay? Now they, I believe you're talking about, yes, they only have monthlies to begin with. That would make sense. And even these are gonna be illiquid. I mean, look at a $70 put or $70, let's see, a $70 call, you have a $1.60 wide bid ask, okay? Do not trade them. But the point is, there's a lot of volatility priced into this equity, folks. You got a $7 move on a $70 stock. You got a 10% move priced into this equity. But you should, because if you're the one selling volatility, you just traded from 48 up to 70 bucks. You're going to demand some premium if you're going to be the one selling a defined risk trade to somebody for a $70 equity that can move five, ten, fifteen dollars in a heartbeat in either direction on their first quarter for numbers coming out today. Uh, excuse me, Wednesday, Wednesday, Victoria's Secret, and we get Bath and Body Works out with their numbers as well. Now you can see the spin off there. You go from 82, and I believe that was the split off, okay? That's not a drop in value. That's going to be, I believe, that company spitting off Victoria's Secret. But even since then, you were up at $66 on August 3rd, and you've given back 10% of the equity of that company down to $60 right now. Um, and they're going to be coming out with the numbers as well. And you're talking about $3.84 move priced into it. And you jump over to the earnings tab, and there it is. They'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday as well all right in terms of what else we have going on jumping back to some of the headlines we have going on uh back to crypto because it's interesting here number one we have and i had this article up for the first time you have crypto rising to two trillion dollars we talked about some of the runs that some of the equities uh, equities some of the cryptos have had two trillion dollars for the first time now what's interesting is you wouldn't think that it's at highs when you have bitcoin well off the highs of 65,000. I mean, Bitcoin was trading above 47,000 for a period from May all the way back to February. You're talking about three full months. But what you have to consider, folks, is you have many other coins. And Ethereum, much closer to the highs that we had at 4,400. But that means that you have other coins that are just dramatically rifling higher to have a market capitalization above true trillion, which we had never seen prior. Um, help push the value of the entire crypto market above $2 trillion Saturday, first time ah, since mid-May. Ah, okay, okay, shame on me. So that's that, that doesn't mean the exact thing. 
Um, I wonder what the record is for that entire value. Well, nonetheless, we'll pull it up. I think Ethereum, folks. That would have been a heck of a buy down here at some of the lows. Not sure it's going to get back down there, but we're going to talk about Ethereum when we get back one more final time. And don't forget about Larry Pesavento, folks. Live Thursday, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. for a live trading webinar. We're going to talk about that when I get back as well. Stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're getting a little bit of negative action on the open here. We get the S&Ps down 25 points. We get the Dow down 255. NASDAQ 100 accelerating lower as well. We're down 83 points right now in the Russell, down a solid 1.1% at 2193. We jump to commodities as we wrap up the 9 o'clock hour. Crude continuing to slide. We got a $65 handle on crude, down $2.64. Gold contract on the flip side, trading higher. Gold catching a bit up to 1788 right now. Tom O'Brien, my dad, out with a new gold report, as as always on Monday mornings. You can check that out under the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com. He's got a new buy in there this morning as well. Uh, notes and bonds continuing the run as well. Look at this pop. I talked about it at the beginning of the show. We are accelerating higher, folks, and we're talking about a yield right now as we pull it up. Remarkable. When you look at the swings, we are getting in yields. 1.22%. I think we're at 1.26%. 1.227 to be exact. But man, quite a pop. You put it back 10 days to see the run that we've had. You're talking about really an acceleration. We are back in to you're talking about uh, almost a week ago Thursday remarkable to think about that we're almost where we were 
a week ago Wednesday, going all the way back to August 4th, just like that, when we were all the way at 133.09 last Wednesday, we're up a point and a half almost in the tenure from that time to 134.17. And as I mentioned, our man Larry Pesvento, he is going to be doing a live webinar, folks, coming up on Thursday, right on the front page of TFNM. When you sign up, you gain access to his newsletter. That starts immediately. Get signed up for the newsletter. That'll be Thursday. For you subscribers to Fibonacci 24-7 out there, you do receive a free month of that newsletter. So that's already baked in as in your next newsletter payment will be free included. $295 cost, 97 of that applied to the newsletter when you think about it. So it's only about $200 class, folks, when you talk about five hours live trading, nine till two, that will be archived. You get a month of his newsletter in there as well. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. We got a lot of earnings, as I talked about this week. We got Fed minutes going on this week, and we got the market starting off with some negative action right now with the S&P sliding 26 points. All right, folks, and I was gonna get to Ethereum, something to consider there. Um, how mining may work from a proof of work to a proof of stake is as they put it nonetheless cryptos on the surge thanks so much for tuning in folks basil chapman's have a little bit of internet problems he's going to try and get it figured out right now but beyond that we got live programming all day at tfn for monday action thanks for tuning in folks have a great monday stay tuned we'll be right back building wealth trading in the stock market